Hey everybody, I wanted to take a little bit of time to look at virtual field trips and the opportunity to use digital tools to have our kids uh, venture out of the classroom. I did this talk recently uh, for a school system and I wanted to record it and share it online so other uh, people could take a look at it. So one of the things that we need to understand as we begin um, is that virtual field trips are basically the use of digital technologies, the use of digital text and tools as a way to give uh, students or learners or individuals an interactive web-based learning experience. And we use these tools to bring them through time, place, space, um, and they can explore different themes in these different areas. So what is a virtual field trip? Virtual field trip in my mind is a structured digital journey. Um, it is something that is organized. There is a point for it. Uh, yes, it could be exploratory, but there are some boundaries to that exploration. We should follow a common theme in that field trip, especially if we're going to use this in a classroom. We want to follow a common theme and make sure that that helps keep that structure. Uh, we should use other resources to help inform and give some relevance and some depth to that field trip. So you might have uh, students or individuals also quote unquote tour websites, primary documents and other digital resources to enhance that learning experience. This field trip uh, can be synchronous and or asynchronous. So synchronous meaning that it happens at the same time. So the teacher and all the students might be there at the same time engaging in this experience or it could be asynchronous. You could have some students working at different paths at a different pace. You could have a teacher working individually with students. You could have a band of students and the teacher going through the experience and then students following at a later date. So there's really no limits to what your expectations are. The challenge would be uh, basically being a little bit uh, imaginative and progressive in what you see the students doing in this space. I see, uh, sorry. Um, this can also be real and or simulated. So a real virtual field trip might mean that we are using uh, tools like virtual reality to go in and see these environments. Um, this could be a real field trip where we go out and travel with students and we record those experiences and share it with students that can't be there. Or this could be entirely simulated. Simulated writ broadly. Simulated meaning Let's look at a bunch of maps and look at primary documents and look at uh, narratives and see what happened during this area. This could also be simulated and we're looking at the use of Minecraft to build spaces where students would go. So there's a lot of different ways that we could see this use of what a virtual field trip would look like. In terms of types of virtual field trips, uh, there are four main types that we'll see in the literature. One is fact finding. Uh, that's the exploration of a topic or area. We're just going to build awareness. We're going to build some prior knowledge or some background knowledge. Uh, we might also see cultural explorations. So we're going to have to think about providing students with firsthand knowledge on a topic or issue. So we're going to dig in a little bit deeper than that fact finding. In the cultural explorations, we're also going to build those, uh, build empathy and build those critical emotional literacies needed to be a global citizen. So we're gonna have them think about other people, put yourselves in other people's shoes. Moving on, we might look at concept application. So we might look at a, a theme or a topic or a challenge and say, okay, let's explore this area. Let's explore this aspect. And as we do so, let's dig a little bit deeper and see how something plays out. So we might see how the role of technology has, you know, uh, modified or advanced aspects of a specific society. We might also build expertise. We might build comprehension by students by taking that theory and applying it to real world applications. So we might say, well, what was the role of or what levers did the cotton gin play in the society or the printing press, you know, in this in this institution? What happened because of these uses of technology? What happened in these real world contexts? Lastly, uh, a virtual field trip might provide opportunities for us to have primary source tours. So this is digging deeper into a cultural, uh, you know, into culture, exploring what 
we might see and feel and hear in these areas. You'd build extra depth of knowledge um, as you think about instruction, as you build awareness and background knowledge on a content area. So there's a lot of different ways we can see virtual field trips being used in uh, our, our different, uh, you know, in our content areas in our classroom. Uh, we can definitely see virtual field trips being used to enrich learning in pretty much any capacity. Uh, one of the places that we might see it being used is in our math classes. You could send your students on an international shopping spree. So you might say, here is your budget. Here are some of the costs uh, of these different products. What might you buy and how much you know, would your currency uh, last in these different areas buying these different products? In our science classes, we might visit uh, endangered zoos, endangered species, and look at the animals and their habitats and figure out what is the role of the ecological system that the animals live within, and then how might we better support them, and when they're in the zoos, are we really giving them the best place for them to succeed, survive? Um, are we really uh, you know, thinking uh, about their natural habitats? In our language arts reading classes, we can obviously take virtual tours. We can supplement our readings by going into an area and exploring. Uh, when I was teaching language arts, I would read Call of the Wild with my class, and we would track uh, the, the travel of the, of the characters throughout the, the novel. Uh, we pay attention to where they were on a map so that I could sort of, uh, you know, make much more granular the experiences of the characters in the novels. In our social studies classes, we can look at primary documents, photographs, um, and make history alive. So this might be something like looking at a war or a, or a conflict and uh, drilling down to the specific place that these events occurred and trying to figure out what it looked like, what was it like for the people that were there uh, in these battles or in these conflicts. There, are One of the, the best parts about the use of technology now is that we see new products and new tools that are coming up every day that can support these experiences and they can make it much more immersive. Earlier I talked about that this could be real or simulated. The truth of the matter is a lot of that we're blurring the lines. Previously, we look at virtual field trips and it might be a video of an area. You could do a, a webinar or you could have some simulation that you walk through. Now we're getting to the part where you know, I can go to a space and I can record it using an immersive video camera and bring that back to my classroom and show them what it looks like. So we really see the use of technology is expanding what this means. Some of my favorite tools, uh, one of my first uh, tools that I use all the time is Google Earth. I think Google Earth provides us uh, great opportunities to uh, step into a virtual environment and sort of walk through planet Earth and see what's out there. Uh, I We'll share out this slide deck so you can look through some of the resources that I've shared there. But Google Earth is just getting better and better, and now the newest versions live in the browser. Um, and so not only can you go in and walk around these different areas, but as a classroom educator, there's also opportunities to create guided tours that live in Google Earth. So you can give students a link and they can walk through these areas and see uh, what you want them to see. Um, there are also tremendous advances in augmented reality, AR, virtual reality, VR, and then also sort of like in between, like a mixed reality. Um, and some of the, the cheapest ways to do this is with Google Cardboard. So you can take a cell phone or old cell phones, you can put them in a little cardboard device and hold it up to your eyes and you can sort of walk through an environment. Uh, I also love uh, Google Expeditions for this. I also love uh, YouTube 360. Uh, when I first started playing with YouTube 360, uh, you know, in my, I would hand the cell phone over to my uh, niece and I showed her, she was in high school at the time, I showed her YouTube 360 and she walked around for 35, 45 minutes. It was talking about how cool it was. She handed the phone over to my son who was in kindergarten at the time and he's there for another hour talking about how cool it was. And now in my classes, I'll have students search for 360 in their YouTube app and start to play with and sort of walk through and think about pedagogical, pedagogical opportunities 
for those video sources. So what might the future look like? Um, I still think that Google Earth is, it is advancing and it is incredible what you can do with Google Earth now and it just keeps getting better and better. I see it bleeding over into AR, VR, but I think that there is a lot that's happening behind the scenes and there's a lot of room to grow. One of those rooms, uh, one of those spaces that I think that we can grow is in Minecraft. So I see a lot of teachers that are having students think about a space and study a space, but then sort of recreate those worlds in Minecraft. So this is more of a construction, uh, you know, as opposed to consumption, this is more construction of content. So it's really in intriguing to see teachers that are stepping outside of their comfort zone and they're saying, okay, instead of us watching a video about Greece or, or watching a video about the Revolutionary War or going into Google Earth and seeing what this looks like, let's recreate these spaces and these places in Minecraft. So there's a lot of really cool work that's happening um, as educators and others are teaching with Minecraft and recreating these spaces um, using these tools. But as I referenced earlier, there's a lot more that's happening. We're seeing augmented reality and virtual reality sort of pick up steam and now you can use a 360 immersive camera and go out to a space and record audio, record video, record images and give a tour of an area. Um, there is also opportunities to create video uh, simulations or video in virtual reality and sort of create those spaces there. So with advances of technology, we're seeing a lot of new opportunities. So how do you make this happen in your classroom? What do you do? A couple tips. Um, first off, if you're planning a successful virtual field trip, I'd say you, you put a lot of thought into it and make sure that it's well planned. Just the same way that you would plan for a trip for yourself or a trip for family, Make sure you sort of understand all of the different reasons why, where you'll go. Make sure that everything is aligned to student learning objectives. You're not using the new technology or tool just because it's cool. Yes, Google Earth is really cool. Yes, Minecraft is cool. Augmented reality, virtual reality, all very cool. But if it's not tied to student learning objectives, we have to ask why we're doing these things. I also believe that there has to be the offline with the online. So you might have worksheet, uh, worksheets and trip guides and all these other materials to support the learner um, so they can keep track of where they've been. A huge challenge with this is for many of these, you do need internet access. Um, so for many of these, you also need device access. So there might be the need for a cell phone or a mobile phone. Yes, you can use older versions. Um, there might be need for uh, a need for tablet or that immersive video camera. So there is a need for some digital tools. There is a need for internet access. I know that that is a challenge for a lot of us. Um, many of these things require access to that web browser, that mobile device, and they might require access to headphones. So these are all things that we think about and worry about or we should consider as we start to bring some of these into our classroom. Also, I think it's helpful to have students work in pairs. I would suggest that it's not just younger students. I would say students at all ages. Normally in a technological classroom, I prefer to have students work in, in pairs or triads, you know, twos or threes, uh, as opposed to giving them all separate devices. I would say I would veer towards the mix of synchronous and asynchronous. So same time and at different times. Uh, when you study and what I mean is maybe build up a model where the class travels together on this virtual field trip but then there's also time built in the schedule so that individuals or groups can sort of break off and think and reflect and decompress a little bit as they figure out what to do next. I would also build in activities. Um, we know that reflection is terribly important. We knew that synthesis and sharing is also important for the learning process. So find in different checkpoints or develop different checkpoints so students can come back and say, this is what I learned, this is what I reflected on, this is, and share that out with their peers. Um, I would also dream big. If you can't find it and it's not already out there, make it. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you can make things with construction paper and glue. Uh, we do what normal teachers do, which is we innovate um, and we bring these new ideas into the classroom. And if you can't figure it out, if you can't make it, 
search online and see what other people are doing for virtual field trips. Also, uh, bring other people into this process. Bring in your library media specialist, bring in your, collab, your, your fellow teachers, bring in your friends, bring in family, and have them collaborate with you to think about what they would do. Um, so hopefully that is of value to you. Uh, that's my thinking about virtual field trips. If this was helpful for you, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If there's things that didn't make sense, please let me know. And by all means, have a great rest of your day.